Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of St. Chad's Messy Church Online. I'm here again with Brother Bear, and today we're going to look at another story of the life and ministry of Jesus. Now, you might have heard something in church or at school about something called Ascension Day. I wonder what that's all about. Well, together, we're going to look at that story, and it's from the Gospel of John, and we've got a short video which explains it all. But basically, when Jesus came back after his crucifixion, proving to everyone that he was still alive, he stayed with his disciples for 40 more days, telling them all about the kingdom of God and how God wants us to treat each other. And after those 40 days are up, he goes back to be with God the Father in a mysterious and wonderful way. Now, David and Kerry have got a wonderful craft activity for us to do, all about that and how we can pray with that in mind. But let's first watch that video and find out what Jesus did next. God's masterpiece. God is with us. This is Jesus. Hey -o. Jesus is the savior of the world and the son of God. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He healed many people from their sickness performed many miracles, like calming storms, and even raised people from the dead. But some people did not like what Jesus was doing, and they put him to death. He died on a cross and was buried in a tomb. For three days, Jesus' body laid in that tomb, and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body, found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. Ah! For he was risen. He was alive. Woohoo! Huh? Hey -o. Ah! And then for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. He taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. Jesus told his disciples that he did all the things that God had told everyone that he would do, and the disciples understood what he was saying. Yep, that makes sense. He told them that he would send the Holy Spirit just as God had promised to be their helper. Sounds good. After Jesus had spent 40 days with the disciples and appeared to many people, hey, that's it. he led the disciples to a place called Bethany. Jesus blessed the disciples and told them to go out and tell the whole world about him and the good news of forgiveness and make disciples of them. Then he said, be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Then Jesus was taken into heaven to sit at the right hand of God. Not long after that, the Holy Spirit did come to the disciples to be their helper. The disciples knew that God would truly be with them always. And the Holy Spirit is still with us today, for Jesus promised that he would be with us to the end of the age, and he is. This week we're thinking about the Ascension. Forty days after his resurrection, Jesus led his disciples out to Bethany, and then lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And as he blessed them, he was taken up into heaven. What we need is a piece of paper and we're going to draw around our hands. So put your hand on your piece of paper and with a pen or a pencil, just draw around your hand. Now 
Your hand is a part of you and it can help you to pray for yourself and for other people. Look at your thumb, it's closest to you. Pray first for your family and friends. Look at your first finger. Pray for those who point you in the right direction. Look at the finger that's the biggest. Pray for the people in authority, people who rule and guide others. Look at your weakest finger. Pray for people who are suffering, the poor, the sick, the lonely, the homeless. Look at your little finger. Pray for yourself last. Ask God to help you to trust in him. So to remind us what we're praying for, we'll write it on each finger. So the thumb is for family and friends. The pointing finger is for people who point with the direct right direction such as parents and teachers the middle finger for people in authority for the government and all leaders the weaker finger is for people who are suffering the poor the sick, the lonely and the homeless and then the little finger is for yourself so we can put me. Sit quietly and look at your hand it's part of you and it can help you to pray for yourself and for others. Now we have it labelled up, we can colour it in or decorate it in any way you like. You could also try putting your hand in a tray of paint and doing a hand print with paint. Think of as many different ways that you can of displaying a, a, a picture of your hand to pray. Your hand or your hand print is unique to you and shows that you are unique to God. Now that we have our hand drawn, it reminds us to think of the people in our lives. As we have these people listed on our hand, we should remember that Jesus is holding us in the palm of his hand. And in holding us, Jesus is also holding all those we love. Write your prayers to Jesus in the prayer hand, knowing that Jesus is in heaven at God's right hand, speaking to God for us and all who we love. Amen. Jesus taught us to pray to our Father in heaven. So as our Saviour taught us, so we can pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. And as we forgive those who sin against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, thank you again, David and Kerry, for leading us through another activity that we can all do at home. And if you made one of those handprints today with the prayers attached to it, do send them in and we'll stick them on the show for you next week. And soon we're going to be looking at the story of Pentecost and that will be coming up next week. And that's a really exciting one. So do stick around. But in the meantime, God bless and have a terrific week. Our God is a great big God.